Welcome to our channel, ladies and gentlemen. That's always I want to say thank you for taking your time to be part of uh, our channel and uh, thanks for your support. In case you are watching for the first time, please take a second or two and click the subscribe button, then follow it with the notification bell and like our videos and you can also share them. When the now president of Niger, Abdurrahman Tiani, stayed a successful coup against the former president, Balzum, several leaders condemned this action. And they said that this is tantamount to taking away the democratic right and the will of the people. One of those presidents who vehemently condemned this action was our president, William Samuel Ruto. What one thing has really, you know, surprised the world, that while other leaders were busy condemning what was going on in now part of West Africa, the citizens were very happy and what they were celebrating on the streets. It reminds me of uh, the Kiswahili saying, Kitanda usicho kilalia hujui kunguni mwake. Or simply put, the wearer of the shoes is the one who knows where the shoe is pinching. And so this explains the reason why other leaders kept on condemn, condemning what, is happen, what was happening. And even the sad had given some conditions, but people like uh, Abdurrahman stood their ground and they said they were doing the, this for the betterment of the citizens. One question was lingering in the minds of many businessmen, leaders, international communities, Africans and the citizens. It was the question of the natural resources that are in Niger. To be very precise, the uranium. You all understand that Africa is well endowed with natural resources and this is one of the reasons, almost the main reason why the Western countries keep on interfering with our continent. Because once they, they, they create an altercation between leaders, then it will, it will give them easy time to exploit our natural resources without benefiting. Just look at Congo, look at Niger. You know, they are one of the richest countries in terms of resources, minerals. But they are the poorest. And it is the reason why war will never end in those countries because the international community will ever create and sustain mayhem so that they can continue to enjoy the resources. But when this happened, Al Jazeera reported something that I want us to look at. They had uh, said that uh, uranium prices, uranium price hike projected after Niger coup spurs slight rise. This is the main natural uh, mineral that is found in, uh, in, in that country. And it was projected that it will rise. Now today, as we speak, the current administration has hiked the price of uranium and it's recorded there that Niger has raised the price of uranium from 0 0.8 to 200 euros per kilogram. First step in making sure that we get value to our resources. The reason why this is very interesting to me is because many a times when I look at what is happening in other countries, the actions that are being taken by other leaders, I try and juxtapose what is happening there with our nation, with our president William Samuel Ruto. And if you ask me by the end of this analysis, you will realize that our president is found wanting when it comes to taking care of his people, of Kenyans. This new administration decided once that they are shooting the price of uranium because that is their main economic activity, that is their main, their main natural endowed mineral resource that is found there. And they knew very well that with the continued presence of the, 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 the French you know, administration there, they knew that was the epicenter of their problems. So what they have done 
is that they have decided to shoot so that when people come to do business with them, there is no more natural uh, automatic exploitation. They want to take care. And when you see, when you take such actions, it is your people who benefit. No wonder they thronged the streets singing with joy. I find it very difficult to understand why our president cannot do this. And I'll give you an example. You know, you know, you, know, you all know that our president talks tough. And when he's in the presence of other international leaders, he knows when to speak to them, what is music to the ears, and they will always give him a standing ovation. But take a look at, for example, when we had our baobab trees from Kilifi being exploited, that they were being taken to Georgia. It took even the intervention of the, 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 the baobab group, because baobab is such a special tree that in Africa there is a baobab andrela group that came and complained that the baobab was being uprooted aimlessly and being taken to Georgia without following the Nagoya protocol because there is a, a protocol that there's an agreement that has to be followed when you want to exploit resources especially in Africa the Nagoya protocol demands that the locals get value for the for what is uh, in the in their soil or in their environment the person who is coming to take it must explain what they want to do with it but our administration just left it to fly away like that and all the baobab tree were cut down. If you look at what is happening today, our president cannot protect his people. The Ugandans or the Ugandan soldiers are based in Migingo to date. They are exploiting our fishermen, they are beating people, persecuting them, sometimes being forced to take raw fish there. And I know this is a, 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 a problem that has escalated when Kibaki was there, Uhuru did not do much, let us be honest. But we criticized, his, criticized it with the same measure. You look at the GMO that is being forced on us. One thing that Uhuru had stood firm on and had, uh, Uhuru never wanted GMO. There was a, a ban on GMO. William Ruto came and uh, lifted the ban, even without making sure that we have stakeholders weighing into the debate so that we, we, we have a common ground on it. And so when I look at the, the, the new president of Niger, he's acting at, in the best interest of the people, while our president is not acting in the best of, in interest of his people. The only thing that William Ruto is good at is protecting members of his tribe. You know, you will find him going even to jails, in jail and using his powers to pardon and he, will pardon, and he will pardon those who are jailed for corrupt cases. He will find some of his tribesmen, he will give them jobs. But when it comes to the general public, he has really left us at the masses of, the, of, of, of external extortion. Even the Al-Shabaab thing is something that if he was serious, he would really protect us from this external insurgency. And this is why I'm saying that instead of, uh, you know, criticizing what is happening in other countries and trying to say that it takes away the will of the people, subverting their will. Let us concentrate on what is happening in Kenya. The other day, you saw Museveni stood firm against West, uh, the Western imagination when he was being forced to accept LGBTQ. This cost him some money from World Bank and IMF, but he stood his ground. He said, I know our culture, I know our people are not for this, and for their sake, I will stand for them. What about our president? Pastor William Samoy Ruto accept, accepted LGBTQ through the back door. He talked to his sister, Madam Martha Kome, and the Supreme Court ruled that the LGBTQ plus community has a right and the freedom of association. And this is why I'm telling you that we do not have a regime that can stand for us. They will always take in everything that comes from the from the western, from the west, the IMF, the the, the the World Bank. When the World Bank says stop all the subsidies on fuel, on unga, on electricity, William Ruto will abandon all the subsidies. When the West comes and says you must increase taxes, that is exactly what William Ruto will do. The West comes and says the windmill is too high, you need to retrench some of your civil servants. That is what will happen. And so, ladies and gentlemen, 
the action from the Niger when it comes to their natural resources has really elated my heart and I, I wish that our president would do the same. You've seen the other day one of the prime ministers in, 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 um, from Uganda warned Kenya against the stalled Brookside because Kenya has stopped importing milk from Uganda saying that uh, the imported uh, powdered milk is really injuring our farmers or something. And you saw how the Ugandans were very mad about it and they said they would retaliate. How I wish that we would have a government that would you know, stand with us, reject Western machination, reject external forces and stand with these people when it comes to GMO, LGBTQ, businesses and all that. And for this reason, one might be tempted to praise the, 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 the new king in Niger. And this is the reason why some people support a coup. Because if the former president allowed the French community to exploit them, they become poor and poorer every day, yet they are sitting on natural you know, uranium, something that is not very common in many countries. And then the new man comes and now they start, you know, getting value for what they have. This is what Gaddafi did. Gaddafi knew very well that, that they are sitting on oil. And he ensured that all the citizens were getting money, you know, social amenities, people were on salaries. This is something that the Western did not want. And as we speak, he's no more. When uh, the former president, the late president of TZ, John Pombe Magvuli, started talking about the unity of Africa and how to ensure that we have bilateral and multilateral uh, trade between and among Africans to be independent is no more. And such leaders who stand with their people are very rare, but they do the best thing. And when you, next time you hear someone praising coup d'etat, don't start criticizing them because they know that sometimes it is a coup that removes a bad leader and installs another good one.